Professor Odhiambo is also joining us from uh, the Meru University of Science and Technology. Professor, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Morning, sir. Yes, uh, a quick one. Are we ready to resume schools? Are we ready to resume classes in university? Thank you very much uh, this morning. Uh, once again, good morning, Kenya. I talk from for the Mary University of Science and Technology where I'm the Vice Chancellor. We did close uh, universities on 16th of March and uh, quickly we migrated all our programs to digital and started preparing uh, to be ready to receive all students whenever the government would allow us to open. And so from 16th of March up to today we have been working on with the Ministry of Education and Research, I mean the State Department of Education and Research. We've been working with the Ministry of Health. We've been working with uh, our county government that we work with very well. Yes, we have put a lot of protocol requirements that were given, the checklist that were given by our parent ministry, the Ministry of Education, of course, uh, where Professor Magoa is uh, the Cabinet Secretary. And yes, I can say with, uh, with the probability of around 95%, giving an error of 5%, that yes, we are ready. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And what are some of these guidelines that you've put in place to ensure that students at your institution are safe? We have, if you come right now to my university at the gate, you'll find that we have put the running water for all students, not only the students, but anybody visiting the university, you have to wash your hand, you have to sanitize yourself. We have put thermoguns, thermoguns in all the, the entries to the universities and also to the classrooms and also to the hostels. We have put running water tanks everywhere, in the classrooms, in the, the hostels, I mean everywhere. We, there's the social distance requirement in our accommodation room. All the best, like I've been accommodating about 980 students. Mm -hmm. Because of the social distance requirement, yeah. I've now reduced that to almost 480. So social distance in the accommodation host, hostels has been observed. The classrooms the, where we were uh, we are initially accommodating our students. We have been given directive in terms of the distance between one desk and another. And if you walk into all my classrooms now, my lecture rooms and laboratories, we have put permanent marker that tells you when you sit here, the next desk will be this and that and that. Yes, and then the signage, the signage telling people Okay, okay, Professor, I'll be coming to you in just a short while uh, as we try and sort out something with your connection. However, that is uh, Professor Odhiambo. He is the Vice Chancellor for the Meru University of Science and Technology, giving an assurance that, yes, learning can resume in that particular institution. However, this is happening in the wake of concerns that have been given by experts, and they are talking about the high likelihood of having a second wave of COVID-19 in the country because restrictions are no longer being adhered to. And the most critical element about this second wave is that uh, these infections now could be, uh, this infection of COVID-19 could be sort of moving to the counties, all right? Remember earlier on when we had our first case in March, a lot was reported in Nairobi and the metropolitan area. However, now concern is being raised that uh, the infections could be moving to the counties. And we don't even want to start talking about infrastructure health-wise and whether or not we have the capacity to handle a second wave of COVID-19. Join in this conversation. Talk to us. Use the hashtag Good Morning Kenya at KBC Channel 1 at Sam W. Njoroge. Let us know whether you feel convinced that learning can resume in our institutions of higher learning. I'm still with Professor Odhiambo, the Vice Chancellor for the Meru University of Science and Technology. Professor, you can hear me now? Very well, very well, sir. Thank you, thank you so much. So maybe you can carry on with uh, the point you are exhausting around the guidelines that you've put in place to ensure that students at the Meru University of Science and Technology are safe. 
Thank you. I think uh, we are ready. We have uh, the hand washing uh, equipment put all over. We have the water running, water tanks all over in the out, all the inlets coming to the universities or all the inlets going to the classrooms and the, the accommodation places. We've done signage all over the university to tell students, to tell everybody coming to the university, all the stakeholders that at all time we should be very cautious and very sensitive to the, 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 the existence of, uh, of uh, COVID-19. We, in our classrooms, we have made permanent mats that tells you when you sit here, the next person should sit there, your desk should sit in such a part, this kind of distance. Mm -hmm. And uh, very importantly, as uh, our president, His Excellency Uru Mugai um, Kenyatta said, this thing also requires personal responsibility. As myself, as a vice chancellor, I have to be conscious of its existence. We have told our students to be conscious. That is a personal responsibility. Whenever they come from where they are living, being, they have to be cautious, they have to be self-aware that this thing exists and they have to take precautions so that they do not expose themselves and expose the other people mm -hmm. to this possible emergency, emergency of, of the disease. So yes, that's what we are doing. Thank okay. you very much. And what level of stakeholder engagement has gone into, into arriving <clears throat> at this decision? When we closed university on 16th of uh, March this year. I engaged all my staff, all the council members, all the students. I wrote almost two, three pages explaining what is happening. And I just to that time is that we just have time to coexist with, uh, with uh, this disease. And so I know the seniors, you know, the senior is the highest ranking academic the university, which now truncated to the dean's committee, which brings all our schools and faculties, and now which now to depart the of departments, where all the staff employed in the university to teach, research, and do all the work are involved. So all this have been involved. We did have a meeting with the, all this and explain the addition. So eventually we agreed we just have to learn how to start. That's the chair. That's when we started now bringing the, the idea of digitizing all our program. And I would like to report that among the many universities that have really adopted technology, Mary University is one of the, this university, the public university that has fully adopted tech, uh, digital technology so that the students are able to access all their notes, access their lectures, access their cars, and we were ready to start doing exams with the technology, but we went slow a bit because we realized that we were about to reopen. So we are ready. We did train lecturers on online teaching. We did train all our students on online learning. By the way, we have done online orientation of all our engineers and 300. We have also trained all our first years on online learning. We are doing this knowing very well that there is a possibility from what we have learned from the whole world that can be reemergence of this disease and we don't want to be found the way we were found early this year when we did not have a second option. This time if it comes we are not going to stop universities we are simply going to migrate to the online learning. Thank you very much. Alright, and, and uh, I like the fact that you bring in the concern of a second wave because now that concern has been shared right here in the country experts arguing that if we continue the way we are going we could see a resurgence of COVID-19 infections and the curve now, you know, getting to its peak. Is that concern ringing in your mind, Professor? Yes, this is real. I mean, even before you come here, we know what has happened in the UK, United mm -hmm. Kingdom. We know what has happened in France. We know what is happening the whole world in South Africa and everywhere, in Israel, everywhere. That this disease disappears and then after some time it comes back again and that's why we are saying that as Mary University of Science and Technology now we are much much brighter in the sense that if 
now it comes we are not going to close the university fully i'll request our council has seen it that we simply migrate or we blend our studies so that this time we don't just close the university if they are going home they are still continuing because at least now we have put some bare minimum bare uh, technical requirements that can actually allow us to continue with a blender or online yes the concern is real and we should not close our eyes on it okay and how do you intend to make up for lost time Uh, do you get that because you are breaking, sir? Uh, sorry about that. Uh, the question is, how do you intend to make up for lost time? Thank you very much. By the time we are closing the universities, we had only four weeks remaining, three of which were for teaching and completing the syllabus and doing the final cuts. And then two weeks were for doing the doing the final examinations. I'm happy to report that through the online learning that we aggressively endorse uh, from 16th of March, we have actually covered nearly all the course content that was remaining. What, we, what is still lacking right now is some people that had not done cuts. Now I'm happy to report to the whole country today, good morning Kenya, to tell you that today my final year students are actually reporting to the university so that they can, in the next two weeks, they should be able to clear their cards and then start the exam. This we have a very detailed course uh, as, I mean, uh, that, 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 that defines how all other people are going to come and the idea is first week they have to clear the, the, the cards that they have not done, submit the assignments and then be ready to do the exam. That's what we have done. So we have not stopped the last month. We have been doing online teaching and I think we are actually ready. Now, mobility being a concern when it comes to the spread of COVID-19, how do you intend to, to control movement in and out of university uh, in, in as far as this is concerned? Thank you very much. This is a real concern, not just for Mary University of Science and Technology. I think it's a concern for all the public universities, for all private universities, for all institutions, for all of us as we go back to our previous normal normalcy. I think what we have done in Mary University, number one, is to tell students, to tell staff to be very, very aware, take responsibility to make sure that even where they are moving, even in the Matatus, they observe social distance in the university social distance and that's why i said earlier on that we have made a very 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 detailed uh, 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 i mean uh, we have told students on what to observe the rules are packed all, all over the university whenever you are in the, the university observe social distance whenever you are going to, to put glasses, laboratory, make to wash your hands, you sanitize yourself. And when you are moving in and out, when you are coming to the gate, make sure that you are actually wash your hands, you are, you are also tested. We have put the thermoguns all over. But again, when they go to public buses and matatus, they also have to observe this. I did tell you earlier that it is a personal responsibility that even in the vehicles when they are parked, you must get into a vehicle where you know that you are going to observe that social distance. You have also to sanitize yourself when you leave that bus and all the rest. These are things that we have done. We are trying to encourage and sensitize all our staff, sensitize all our students. And I'm um, actually urging all of us as Kenyans that the responsibility start with you. It's not just the president, it's not just the CS, it's not just the vice chancellor, it's not just the student leadership, it's not just the university union, but all of us individually, we have to take this responsibility seriously, even when we are moving in and moving out wherever we are. Thank you. Should Meru University report a case of COVID-19? God forbid, what will you do? <laughs> uh, a good question, which again applies to everyone, even KBC. By the way, thank you very much for KBC giving me a chance. The same, same thing that KBC would do. The first thing I would basically, we, by the way, we have a team 
-hmm. we have protocol teams, we have health team, we have everybody team committees in the universities. And one of the things they have said that if a Diambo falls sick with COVID, for, for example, God forbid, there are protocols that we have put and they are written down, they are all there. I've even tabled them up to the our council, I've even given them to the 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 the, 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 the PS uh, Department University Education and Research and even the CS. And all of us have so that tells us when the Ambo falls sick, first of all, he has to be isolated. We have identified a room as, a, as an isolation room within the university where the Ambo will be, will be taken care of on on route to identify hospital for us is Meru level five hospital where the Ambo will be taken. So that is exactly what will be done. But we are praying, and I am a very faithful person, that Odiambo is not going to get this COVID-19 so long as he observes the protocol that put on as advised by our Ministry of Education, and as we take personal responsibility, we pray that this is not going to happen. Thank you. Right. Uh, we really do pray that that is not going to happen and uh, the right protocol will be employed. How will you handle um, the issue around graduations and uh, completing coursework and merging the years to ensure that uh, we are making up for lost time? Our digital system is set up. We have uh, one of the few public universities that have done online orientation of all the first years. We have few, one of the few public universities that have gone through Odell, open distance and e-learning very successfully. We are ready now to do exams to our final year students to, after they have completed their coursework in December. It go physical. If it doesn't go, we are ready to do online graduation, which I think some of our public universities and some of our private universities have done with a lot of success. So yes, we are ready. The system is there, and we are actually on discussion with our chancellor that confers the degree that if COVID continues, we'll still have our graduation in December, but it will be online graduation. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much uh, for that. Maybe you can take a minute and address our stakeholders of the Meru University of Science and Technology app, and including your students. What would you tell them this morning? Hello? Yes, Professor, a message to the stakeholders of Meru University of Science and Technology, up and including your students. I've what lost would you, you tell them? I've lost you. You want me to tell students? Who, I, I can't get you, sir. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. I understand. What message do you have for your students and stakeholders of Meru University of Science and Technology? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to appeal to all our stakeholders of our university, the Mary University of Science and Technology, the university we love so much, to stand up and support this university. We are ready. We have made all the protocols that are required for the university to reopen. We are ready to to have us, our family students starting today to report and they complete the coursework, the exam, the cast that they are not done, and then start their exams on 15. We have rolled out a timetable for all other continuing students and I pray that they look at it and be ready to report. And um, as I conclude, Kenyans, the Kenyans, we will accept the new normal that things are not to be the same the way they have been. Yeah. We are moving to the new normal, which requires that we have to do blended learning, we have to do online learning, we have to do physical learning. And this will require support and understanding from all our stakeholders, especially the parents, the sponsors of my, my students, 
And I also appeal to my students to migrate their mindset from the way things used to be done in sector. You don't say that I don't have a computer, I don't have a smartphone. Yes. I just have to make sure that we are really prepared to adopt this reality. We can move on with our life as if there is no COVID. Okay. That's the message I have for you. Yes. I think together we are going to thank you very much. All right, Professor Othiombo, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much uh, for your contribution into this particular conversation. Wish you all the best in both your present and future endeavors. God bless you and thank you very much. Asante. So we've been speaking to various vice chancellors of various institutions in this country to just find out whether or not we are ready to reopen our universities and tertiary institutions. And it is coming out clearly that yes, kwa ground, kila kitu iko imara, they have set in the protocol, the guidelines that are going to help you as a student be safe as you resume learning in universities it has been quite an insightful discussion that has been and also earlier on we had eye on politics and jane wamboi was uh, having a conversation around uh, the world teachers day which is being marked today and there's actually a story in all of the dailies about how exactly this day will be marked the concerns we have when it comes to teaching fraternity and infrastructure in the country you will find that story highlighted across the dailies and maybe just maybe it could be making its way into bulletins right here at kbc channel one